12 months in a pile of old wood that I ripped off my front porch. Is it gonna float? Stick around to the end and find out. So I finally finished my boat video. I started this May 5th, 2022. So it's going on exactly 50 weeks. Two or three weeks will be one year. I'm really happy it's done. I wanna say a huge thank you to Carolina Shoes for supporting me and many of the other makers in this community. We get to do what we wanna do and we get to promote Carolina Shoes. So Carolina, thank you very much. Also Total Boat has been a huge help with the resins and the epoxies and the, and the, and the mesh and, and the finish and also type on. So thank you guys. And of course, Bear Mountain Boats who provided me with the plans to make this boat. I'll remind you, this boat is predominantly made out of my old deck boards from the front of my house, from the restoration I did on my front porch. I was able to recycle all this very, very old dug fur, beautiful grain, instead of throwing it away. That was, that was a really big win for me. I just wanna say thank you for following along. And if you haven't seen part one, I'll put the link right at the top of the description. Go back and watch part one of this boat build. Thank you for the love and support. I appreciate it. So this gets a keel on top of the other keel. It's got a special name for the inside keel. I can't remember what it is right now, but we're gonna work from the middle up. And then once we get some epoxy on there, we could stick this one down and work our way up and out of it. And then this will all get trimmed off in a little bit. Go right on Just it. Go on the Just go right on top of it. Yep. Right just start pushing it in. And uh, just be careful. Just dab it on your way down this whole line. So we just want to try and keep that line steady so it stays down the middle. Like I said, it's getting covered with a two inch strip. So we have a little bit of leeway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you'll be able to see through it in a couple seconds. Yeah, best to just pour it on and dab it. Try not to brush it because you're just going to keep pulling shit around. Just dab it. Dab it. That's it. You'll get the use of it. You'll get the hang of it. It's just a reminder of where we came from. Now this is red grandis or eucalyptus. It's the same wood that I used when I did the porch restoration. This actually is the same species of wood. I went back to the same sawmill and got a couple big pieces of it to finish up the details on the boat. And out of this piece, I'm gonna get the keelson, which I'm cutting right now, and the in whales and the gunnels, the outer whales and the inner whales. And right there is the end of the stem and the keelson is just an extension of the stem and it screws right onto the keel that's right below the surface there down the center i'm just epoxying it in i used epoxy to, f to fasten it and then just to give it a coat and i'm just cutting more of what's going to become the ribs inside the boat these are going to become the the gunnels and then the outwells and here you see my cnc machine is set up to cut a pocket that's how i set this cut up it's it's a pocket and it goes down depth the cut is one third of the the depth of the hole and it thinks it's cutting a pocket and a piece of material but in fact what it's doing is cutting a notch in the material and now that's what i need to make the left and the right side so i have it measured to move up a certain amount i have it marked because with the oar locks and the stations where the seats are going to go, you don't necessarily have the 
the uh, the notches in those same spots so it's sort of mapped out in the plans and here you can see a nice side view of how those are getting cut out with the CNC machine and this is one piece I'm cutting then I'm going to split it in half and then I'll have a piece for the left and right side of the boat but this was an interesting, and if you go back and watch my canoe video, I did this by hand with a router. And there you could see I was doing this in the wintertime. I had the door open so the piece of material can go through the CNC machine and come out the other side. And now there you see I'm splitting it in half. So sometimes you got to do a, a few moves ahead. you got to be a few steps ahead of where you want to be so you know where you're going. And this was... This was basically because I did it with the canoe, so I knew this time I could get it out of one piece. And there, I, I do a lot of freestyle cutting on the table saw. And these pieces get a long taper. I could hand plane them in, or I could remove a lot of the material just following the line. And I wouldn't recommend doing this unless you had a riving knife. If you did not have a riving knife, I don't think it's nearly as safe as it already isn't. And it's Tony's hand plane. Now, I'm working in those cuts that I just did on the, the saw and I'm just smoothing them in so those long tapers become nice gradual tapers get rid of all the saw blade marks which is what I'm doing there and here you can see this is a mistake I made on the canoe early on although this has much more gentle curves the canoe had some more severe curves so it was hard to lay it in from one end and have it all the way laid up at the other end without clamping it as you go for good instead of clamping it and undoing it here, all these clamps are just to get that measurement and that mark. I'm able to cut it right in place and trim it a couple times. And now I'm going for the glue up. Now that I'm confident that I got my sizes all mapped out, and I'm going with Total Boat Epoxy. And I'm wearing my Golden Protective Services gloves, which are nice because you can take them on and off without ripping them. They're really durable. Golden Protective Services. And now, I'm gluing up the other side. The whole time epoxy is running everywhere. But you do have some open work time with it. Once you get it all in place, you could then go back and wipe it off. If you had alcohol, you could wipe it off with alcohol. But more than likely, it's still sticky enough. It's not sticky enough that you can't just wipe it off. Now it's a few hours later, maybe the next day, and I'm taking all the clamps off. Just making sure that I got good adhesion, which of course I do. But you see how many clamps you need. You just don't know what you need until you need them. So many clamps. And now I'm going to get ready to cut the material for the outside. Here I cut them already. I tapered them. And now I'm putting some texture on the upper part. Putting some epoxy on there. So I just I roughed up that epoxy on the outside edge of the boat. And now here we go. I'm just clamping this all in place. And with those ribs on the outside and this rib on the, the outside and the rib on the inside, this is very, 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 very sturdy. It's amazing how much stronger the boat gets with just having those inside and outside. And those scuppers, that's what those holes are called. They're scuppers. And that's so when the boat it does have water in it and you turn it on its side, the water will gush out of those holes scuppers on the in whales and now it's time to make the deck and how do you get that perfect shape of the deck i just make a tape pattern and then i use a brazing rod from the welding table to give myself a nice perfect gradual curve and that's just a piece of filler rod and i sharpie line that so i know where to go and then i just cut out that tape with an exacto knife and i have the perfect pattern that will fit right back in there Cut it out of some half inch plywood that becomes my template for making what is called the deck. And it creates a, a tremendous amount of strength there at the front of the boat. Sort of like what some bigger boats would call the breast hook. And now I'm milling up some more of the floorboards from the front porch. And I'm just trying to make a starburst pattern that comes off of the apex of the tip of the boat. Now I'm freestyle cutting some of these straight shapes on the crosscut sled. I'd only recommend somebody with experience do that. <clears throat> now I'm building up this sort of starburst shape all from the tip and freestyling some of these cuts because I know that I'll go over to the jointer and clean them up. And I could use the bandsaw, but I'm getting nice long straight cuts. Now on the 
the jointer I have about a one or two degree curve on there so when I play both sides and I bring them together you could see how it's starting to make an arch and that's the goal is to make an arched deck top there and you see how I tape one side and then just pivot it use black tape as my glue clamp and here I'm just moving further along adding a little bit over several hours maybe even the next day and now I have enough of a piece to cut my deck out of and you saw I just did a rough cut to get rid of some of this scrap and now this is my deck it needs a lot of work to get to fit in there perfectly and I'm hand planning and making notes each time I give it a dry fit every time making more notes looking for where there's gaps where there's touches it became a hot day the whole while just looking for the fit up trying to get the better fit up and now I finally got the fit up I want you can see that plenty of room for epoxy but at the same time nice and tight no air gaps and I end up working that nose down a little bit hand planing the curve so it's nice and sexy and I just built some built up some epoxy on the inside and the outside for strength this is primarily just to give it some more rigidity while I'm working on it I thought to mesh it I did not mesh it I wish I would have at this point but I guess I can go back and do that anytime and I just sanding away and building back up my mirror braid grinder with the big giant flywheel on it is amazing for this exact task right here getting a nice beautiful fair curve on the front of the deck makes it look nice and sexy and just putting some epoxy on there and then doing my fit up I fit them up and getting that little pull in right there really makes all the world a difference now I'm going over to my beautiful piece of Doug fur this also I purchased from first cut and out of this I'm gonna make all the other parts for the boat first up are all these braces that go around right now these are gonna go on the transom and the very back the three sides on the transom the bottom middle and the left and right sides just band sawed them up and then really just took them over to the disc sander and got them in pretty good shape but the what I needed I think that's the one I need twice so I just cut it in half and I have one for the left and one for the right now that might be the big one that goes on the bottom it's the other two yep there it is and then a lot of times I just make a decision right at the bandsaw I could always fix it later if it's a little off and I'm just getting that epoxy glue in there right there that's the thick so from total boat and that's how I glued on all these parts and I did follow up with a screw in some cases but the thick so got me started in every one of these instances you'll notice that piece I have going all the way across from one side to the other that helps keep those tangents so that even though they're on either side of the boat the tangency from all the way across it telegraphs through now I'm getting ready to make the seats and I take this dug far I split it in half on the big bandsaw throw it through the planer a few times and I end up with about a three-quarter inch piece for the seat it's not wide enough so I do need to scab it together with some domino joints and here we go just cutting everything to size domino joining it all together if you don't know the domino joiner it's a fest tool that creates these little tombstone shapes that go inside basically creates a floating tenon a pocket for a floating tenon the tenons all come in a big box like screws and then you just hammer them into your glued in holes and then tap it together it's like a biscuit joiner but more expensive and works better you could do a dry fit with the dominoes and everything will stay together and here we go just making up the, the right depth of the seat and now these are the little knee braces that I'm making on the bandsaw here they come these little knee braces are going to be what supports the seat when it interacts with the wall of the boat and I, I need one set for the forward seats and one set for the back seats and again I just make my profiles based on some cardboard templates I made of camera and then here I just make a quick decision split them in half and then I take them over to the disc sander and I get them all chooched into the right shape which they have some compound bevels on them and here you can see
All right, these are some critical steps for me. I was able to make the seat risers, and now these are the templates that are going to become the seats. I had to take the time and figure out the relationship to the straight part of the board to the curved part of the sidewall. And by taking my time and doing these templates, I'm going to be able to know exactly how to cut these blanks out to fit inside the boat with very little guessing. I'll be able to pop these out and then use these as my templates. Again, this is glued to this at each side and straight lines on the ruler will fill in the in-between. So instead of using a full piece of material to make the seat templates, I just used that rib across. The critical measurement was the angle that I'm drafting right there with the pencil. Now once I cut those profiles out, I put some paint on the wood just to keep it from cupping. When I glued it up, it was starting to cup a little bit. So once I cut out those profiles, I still need to get them to fit into the bevel of the boat. As you notice, my templates are only a quarter inch long. So I take these three quarter inch planks and using some hand planes, I get them close and then just get a fine tuning with the belt sander. And once I get them to live in place, I know I'm good to go. And I did use a level across the beam of the whole boat just to make sure that everything kind of lived where it was supposed to. So everything was level in space, both seats in the middle and the seats at each severe end of the boat. Now I'm using the total boat thick so to put a little rib, glue it to the boat itself, and then I'll put some screws down through the seat planks. But in the meantime, I'm gluing that right to the wall of the boat with some thick so. And then in a few minutes, once that's all cured, well, a few minutes in the edit, but it was really the next day in real life. Now this is going to be the rib that carries the very back seat near the transom. And using just some stuff to, to keep it rigged in space while the epoxy dried. Again, thick so. And I put ribs in every direction. So then I just set some brass screws. And I just didn't want any cracking to happen, so I left the seats just screwed down. So they are glued to the little risers or the little, little knee braces, but they're only screwed to the ribs that are glued to the boat. Does that make sense? Maybe, maybe not. But I wanted the wood to be able to breathe a little bit. By the time I end up in the water, everything gets epoxied in several coats of gleam, which is a spar varnish. And now I'm making up the seats at either end of the boat, which were a little complicated. I spent a lot of time off camera making the templates and quarter inch plywood. And now here, using my templates from my plywood, I was able to draw all these out. And there you see, I made my front and my back seat. And now here I'm taking all the planks from the, the back seat that goes right in front of the transom. And I'm cutting them to shape and size. And you can see there I account for the knee brace that goes from the middle back to the transom to the floor or the keelson. Maybe by the time I build my fourth boat, I'll start to remember the names of all these things. It's starboard. Aft, all that type of stuff. Because Lord knows I can't remember it now. <laughs> and it was important to keep the spacing between all of these planks, so I cut a lot of scrap to keep the spacing between them. And then I use these, the nail gun to just tack them in place, and I flip it over and I put the gold screws in, or the brass screws everywhere. And there you see I'm going to pull my spacers out. It's important to keep the spacers. The planks might not be exactly precise width, but if the spacers are all even, then your eye will be fine with what it looks at. But when everything's all messed up and the space between them is messed up, your eye looks at it and goes, what's wrong with this person? But when all the spacing is all consistent, it really fixes up a lot of mistakes, in my opinion. Some people might say don't make mistakes, but that's just not possible. Not for me anyway. And so that fits nice and snugly. I don't think I ever even screwed it in. I think ultimately just the paint holds it in place because I do paint it and then stick it back in a few times. And we got our other seats and then the front one goes in place. And that's nice and snug as well. 
And man, what a relief. What a relief at this point. The end is close in sight. Now these are the Orlocks. And again, it's just that red grandis or the eucalyptus. And they seemed a little bit thick and tall. And so I cut a bevel on them. And here you can see me passing through. I kind of do a no-no. I have the bevel leaning towards the fence, but that's just sort of the best way to make the cut. And I drill a hole down through them for my Orlocks. I got the Orlocks on Amazon. And I wasn't sure if they were going to be perfect or not, so I didn't glue anything in ultimately. Ultimately, for the boat ride, they were okay. They weren't great. They were a little big. Well, my oars were too skinny. But I think I'm going to make a set of oars anyway. So I cut out this little spigot there. That's so that I can get to the bottom of the oar locks and just tie a string to them so they don't fall out on the water. And with a little bit of total boat in place, I let them dry overnight. And then I come back in the next day and I put some screws into them as well. And if you understand where I put that bevel, the bevel's on the outside of each one of them. Makes the top skinnier than the bottom. It just seems to make them flow with the direction of the boat and the, like the dynamic lines of the boat. By leaving them chunky and square, they just look too big. They look like loaves of bread on there. In fact, they're all still a little too big, but it's sort of what the drawing called for. I did some research on this, and the people who have made these in the past only put one set of oar locks on them, even though the, the drawings show you can put them in two positions. I just personally like them in both positions. It just gives a little bit more visual stimulation to the boat itself. You know, as an artist, I, I make these things sometimes. I make decisions for different reasons. And there you go. And there's the Orlocks straight off of Amazon. And now I'm making the windshield or the windscreen. It's really more just a, for lack of a better term, it's just a little support rib that goes right in front of the the deck. It goes in that curve of the deck. Now I tried to steam bend this at first, but it was too severe of a steam bend and the wood split. So I just laminated it together. I don't show that in the video. So there's several laminations glued together. And obviously it's much longer than I need it to be, but that was just so I get the nice curve right where I need it. I only ultimately use a small piece, kind of where my hand is there, right to the opposite side. But let this dry overnight. And then it didn't really take the curve of the deck itself, how it's got that, that dome top. So I made it in two pieces. So once I finally cut what I needed out of that glued up curve, you see me here screwing it in place. And then I'm able to glue right down the middle in the front. And I pre-drilled everything before the camera started, except for that one. And here you see the other. I'm using Type Bond 3 on everything, which is a waterproof glue. And then everything gets followed up with sometimes with epoxy, at least at the very least, but also always with spar varnish. So everything's protected from the water. And ultimately, I'm not leaving this thing out in the weather. I'll use it in a day or two, and then I'll put it back inside in the barn or someplace where it's protected from sun. The sun is what really kills a lot of these things. It's not necessarily just water. It is the UV rays that just destroy everything outside and the hot and cold and now I'm just using my, my Starrett compass to give myself a consistent scribe and then with my Hillview Metal Woodworks, Hillview Wood and Metal, Hillview Tools, Hillview Tools hand plane. I get that little windscreen in shape with a little bit of wood files. And now this is sort of a technique that I perfected using the router without a plate on it. And of course I'm using a flush cut bit on there. There's no other way for me to have gotten that flush cut like that without using that router bit in space like that. And then just hand sand it into place and now I'm ready for paint. There's only one critical point left to build right now and that is the deck that is on the floor of the boat itself. And man, that was complicated to figure out. That was one of the hurdles that kept me from finishing this boat a little bit earlier. And you'll notice I, I've added paint and sanded it off and added the gleam. It's the spar varnish, I call it paint. I've added it and sanded it off several times at this point. And here Mike's given the bottom like its fifth coat. So you see how shiny it is. We're still sanding that down and giving it more paint on top of that. 
that's several coats of resin and several coats of gleam spar varnish and the glossy finish and that's the compound and that's the building we did the TV show in with the new roadway and man I'm ready to be done with this boat I cannot wait to take it out final few steps of making the decking on the flooring and I was having a hard time making these long curved cuts so I just went to the table saw and you can make some pretty nice curves with the table saw a lot more than you think you can again it's really important to have a riving knife when you do this I wouldn't do it unless you had a riving knife in fact I wouldn't do this don't do this and so here you can see the the planking for the floor I had a really long strip of wood which gave me all my my lines I used as my guide and then I screwed the ribs in place again making sure the spacings even the planks themselves aren't perfectly spaced well but the space between them is so the, the, the planks themselves are a variety of widths they're all not exactly perfect it's really difficult to get that nice fair curve from one end of the boat all the way to the other across six boards so believe me it was a real pain in the butt but I was able to do it and now here's the big day that plugs in there and then the other part plugs in around the other seat post and I was able to strategically put a couple screws to keep that in place which only I only need to take out two screws to get all of that out it also locks together and this is it ready for the big 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 tryout more locks in place I did tie a little string before I took it out on the water in case anything fell Kaplunsky into the water I didn't want that to happen but man, what, a, what an accomplishment. The sense of pride I felt right here. And I get to put the Carolina name on it. And that's just some laser cut 3M film. And I didn't put it on the very back because the back gets a motor in a future video. And I didn't want it to interfere. So I just put it on either side of the boat. This way you don't have to be at the very back to see what's going on on the name. And then, of course, I need my branding, and I use my Hillview Tool branding iron, and I'm calling this one done. If you're still watching, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Carolina Shoes. Thank you, my fans and people who have supported me over the many years. If you like this video, please share to your feed. Tell your mom and dad about it. Tell a friend. Thank you.